Hey guys, it's Jean-Claude. We're back with another deck opening. Hopefully you saw yesterday's video for Rick Fulford, our first $25 patron. He opened up a Maverick. How amazing is that? It was a Maverick Yixel Bolter. Pretty cool. Can never ever complain about a Maverick. Also, the deck itself was really good and had an absolutely incredible name. I definitely suggest going back and watching the video if you have not seen it. Also, a quick shout out, we have three new patrons today, Micah, Lita, and Noah Smith. Noah Smith is also another $25 patron, so thank you very much. Today's deck, it's Dis, Brobnar, and Sanctum, Sergeant the Spider Jansen. Nice. Okay. We're going to start off with... Hey, Sanctum. Shoulder armor, it's an upgrade. Amber every plate. While this creature is on the flank, it gets plus two armor and plus two power. Very nice. Protect the weak. Also an upgrade. Amber every plate. This creature gets plus one armor and gains taunt. Staunch Knight. Four power. Two armor. He gets plus two power while he's on the flank. Very nice target for that shoulder armor. Raiding Knight. Four power. Two armor. Play. Capture an Amber. Lady Maxina. Five power. Two armor. Play. Stun a creature. As an action, you return her to your hand. Always love stun effects. Champion NFL, six power, one armor, taunt. Radiant Truth, Amber whenever you play it, stun each enemy creature, not on a flank. I've been using this card lately, it is so good. Oh, the Poverty, wow, we have this in the last deck as well. Amber whenever you play it, destroy each of your artifacts. Gain two Amber for each artifact destroyed this way. So we have none in sync this time. We're gonna have to hope that inside of Dis and Brobnar, we have some artifacts. Inspiration, ready and use a friendly creature. Glorious view, for each creature your opponent controls an axis of you, you gain an amber. Blinding light, another stun effect, amber whenever you play it, choose a house, stun each creature of the house. Two of those, man, I'm telling you, those stun effects, they are really powerful. Now we're on to Dis, it's Toxin, three power, reap. Your opponent discards a random card from their hand. Succubus, three power, during the draw card step, your opponent fills their hand a one less card. Pit Demon, 5 power, action, steal an Amber. Ember Imp, 2 power, your opponent cannot play more than 2 cards each turn, great first turn play. 2 Ember Imps. Dust Imp, 2 power, when he's destroyed, gain 2 Amber. Another Dust Imp. Charette, 4 power, play, capture 3 Amber, excellent. Tendrils of Pain, Amber whenever you play it, deal 1 damage to each creature, deal an additional 3 damage to each creature if your opponent forged a key on their previous turn. Control the Weak, uh oh, wait, I just realized... We went to actions and we once again did not have any artifacts for the Oath of Poverty. <laughs> oh, it's going to be real bad. All right, so control the weak, Amber, whenever you play it, choose a house on your opponent's identity card. Your opponent must choose that house as their active house on the next turn. Arise, that's actually really good because we had so many disc creatures in here and we had great dis effects. Ember Imps, Toxin, Succubus, bringing back Dust Imps for more Amber. Arise is really powerful in here. Choose a house. Return each creature of the house from your discard pile to your hand. Gain one chain. Two arise. Hmm, nice. Now we're on to Brobnar. It's Troll. Eight power. Reap. He heals three damage. Pingle who annoys. He's two power elusive. Deal one damage to each enemy creature after an interest play. Lomar Flame Fist. Another amber control. Five power. Whenever you play him, if your opponent has seven more amber, they lose two of it. Two of him. Headhunter. Five power. Fight. Gain one amber. Fire Spitter, 5 power, 1 armor. Before the fight, deal 1 damage to each enemy creature. And a War Chest. Wow, it's a really good card, but I kind of don't want to get rid of it with the Oath of Poverty. You know what I mean? So it's an artifact. Uh, as an action, gain 1 amber for each enemy creature that was destroyed in a fight this turn. That is really cool. We had very nice Brobnar creatures. It'd be really great if we end up opening something that allows us to fight with other, ho other houses since we had Sanctum. Tremor. Wow, so it's a 1 artifact Oath of Poverty deck. Oof. That's rough. At least we get the Amber off the Oath of Poverty. It does something for us. But check this out. It's another stun effect. It's Tremor. Stun a creature in each of its neighbors. Two Tremors. Three Tremors. Wow. Let's see. That's six stun effects. Minus the creature that stuns as well. So that's awesome. Smith is a great card. Amber never played. Gain two if you control more creatures than your opponent. And the last card of the deck. Follow the leader. Hey, that's something I was looking for. Play for the remainder of the turn, each friendly creature may fight. So that's really good with the war chest and the fact that we have Sanctum. Let's go back through this. So that's a three amber. 
That's going to be, at l I'm going to hope for at least two, so five. That could be six. Seven, eight. Ten, twelve. Thirteen, fourteen. So for at least one, so 15, because we had quite a big, few creatures in here. 16, 17, yeah, somewhere around 17, 19. That's actually really good. I would have liked to see a few more artifacts for this Oath of Poverty, but, you know, it is what it is. These upgrades are going to be really good in here. Imagine putting Protect the Weak on a troll. That's awesome. He's able to basically tank for other creatures, and then whenever he reaps, he heals himself. Very nice. We already mentioned Shoulder Armor on top of Staunch Knight. Excellent. I mean, look at these. Uh, so let's look at actual like creature control we have here. Radiant Truth. Got the Blinding Lights. Tendrils of Pain, kind of. Only if your opponent forged a key. Yeah, let's see. Follow Leader does a little bit too. Helps take care of the board. Look at those Tremors. Let's see. This can do it as well. So if your opponent has a problem creature, you don't, even if you don't have a board, you can at least play a creature, inspiration, fight, hopefully take care of like a hunting witch or something. I also like the fact that we have the Toxin and Succubus to mess with our opponent's hand. With the two Arise, that means early on we don't mind if we actually play an Arise and only get maybe two creatures back. That's not a bad play. Because you're going to be able to play them, get rid of the chain for one turn. I think that one chain is worth two decent creatures. And the fact that you have some air control there with Charette is really cool. Pit Demon being able to steal, that might come into effect. As far as Amber Control, let's check that out. We had the steal, we had Capture there with Charette. I know we have the two Lomer Flame Fists. Let's see. Oh, here they are. Those, those two. Hmm. And then just the Raiding Knight. Wow, that's, that's real low. I mean, it's really low. The good news is this is at least a bigger effect. But the rest of these, yeah, pretty situational with the Lomer. Sometimes I feel like Lomier. Sometimes I just want to actually play them. Just get the five power creature on the board, maybe start reaping. It's not something you necessarily want to hold on to there. Raiding Knight, only capturing the one will hit pretty often. I mean, anytime you play him, it's pretty much safe to say he's going to capture one. Yeah, uh, this deck, I love the board control it has in it. It has pretty good Amber. War Chest could really bump that up if you can actually get some uses out of it. It's got some ways to deal with some of your small opponent's small creatures with Piggle Hood Noise, Tendrils of Pain. Uh, combining those at least takes out some two power creatures. Get some damage on them as well with the Dust Dimps. You don't mind sacrificing those to get the Amber. And yeah, the, the Arise, really for any house isn't too bad. So whatever house, I mean you prefer to go Dis, obviously. But if for some reason you don't have any disc creatures in there, and you've already lost quite a bit of Sanctum creatures, you don't mind getting those back as well. Uh, so yeah. Let's see. Gosh, what are we going to give this deck? It's kind of tough. I'll tell you why it's tough. This looks really good on paper. I think this is going to be just a real nice deck whenever you're looking at just the numbers. But I'm trying to figure out how exactly it's going to play. Um... It's, it's simply because it's going to be slow. It's going to be spending a lot of turns setting up, and it doesn't have the control to prevent your opponent from really forging keys. And it's it's almost too much stun. It really is. You know, you take these and you put three tremors next to it, that's one-sixth of your deck. So yeah, if you just do the pure math on that, well, that's great. Your starting hand, you're going to have at least one stun. But what you really got to look at is how often are you going to have multiples of these? When are you going to be drawing them where... They essentially aren't going to have much effect because you got Blinding Light and then you have the Tremors. I mean, it's great if you're up against a big creature deck. Actually, I'll tell you where this might do good. And I haven't seen too much of it, but this might perform really well against a uh, the Set 2. This might be good against Age of Ascension. Just in the little bit I've seen because it seems to be really heavy creature based now. Um, I haven't seen too many actions. I mean, there are some great actions, don't get me wrong. But this deck might actually perform really well against those because of the stun effects. That'll be uh, something to test. I think whenever we get our first Age of Ascension deck on here, I think I want to kind of compare it to this deck, see how they play out. Um, so it's kind of hard to rate this. Against Call of the Archon decks with a lot of speedy decks, though, I, I just feel like it's a hair slow. It can't cycle. It can't make the most out of the Arises early. So, uh, therefore, it kind of bumps it down a little. It's still above average. 
Um, I'm gonna give this deck, it's it's so close, it's right between a C plus and a B minus. It's way too hard to call. It's funny, against the Call of the Archons deck, it's probably a C plus. From what I've seen of Age of Ascension, that's whenever it falls into like the B minus category. Alright guys, well I do want to thank you very much for watching my videos, and I will see you next time.